so in my last video, I went over and ranked all the Galen era newbies, while giving my thoughts on them. Among the comments on that video were a request to do a follow up video ranking the hit era newbies. So, let's do it! Like my previous ranking, I will continue with the main rules, such as no humans, please respect the opinions I put down, and you don't have to agree. But I'm going to add two new disclaimers. One, tiers S through F will be going only on the hit era characters. If someone ends up in the S tier, they won't be in the same ranking as if they were a classic character. Two, I only realized while rewatching and researching the characters that a Sword of Life already did a video like this. But as this is a requested video, please understand I am not copying anyone. The following is just my opinion on all the new characters of the hit era. S will be for the best characters, A is really good, B for nice, C for meh, D for we didn't need this, and F for terrible. Without any further ado, let's rank these characters. Molly's debut episode is one I grew up with, so I could always recognize her. We even had the take-along model of her as kids, and it's probably still with most of the collection. Compared to the other engines introduced up to this point, she's a real standout. One of the few 4-4-0s in the show, she was inspired by the GER D56 class Claude Hamilton. This makes her quite old, almost as old as Edward in fact. Her design is very elegant, and she's also one of the few yellow engines. Character-wise, she's very shy and timid, and rather easily made upset. Though she does have a more humorous side, as seen when she teased Gordon and gets her own bag of Emily for having made fun of her. When Henry was replaced by Rebecca, many people compared the two. But from what I've seen, the only thing they have in common is their color. Molly is a lot more timid and shy, while Rebecca is enthusiastic and a lot louder. But overall, Molly's alright. I'll put her in B tier. Molly felt special. I'm Mighty. And I'm Mac. And together, we're Mighty Mac! Mighty Mac is one of the most interesting cases of unique engines in the show. The idea of a devil fairly actually dates back to the Season 6 concept art, with the planned little giant. They are essentially conjoined twins in the Thomas universe. It took me a little while before I first saw their episode, but they are definitely a memorable engine for me. In fact, they might just be one of the most unique designs in the whole show. Though I think the concept of the episode was done much better with Love Me Tender in the Brenner era. Also, if they were this bad at working together, then they must have been newly built or two separate engines before. But as the series continues, they seem to cooperate with each other much better. Overall, Mighty Mac are both a unique concept, and a real standout in the series. They also appear several times throughout the rest of the hit era. Not sure what else to say really. B tier. Hello! Puffed Neville cheerfully. Neville is an interesting case to say the least. His debut episode isn't even about him. Like, he only gets four words in total. Four! Hello! Hello! Thank you! A signalman had more lines than him. He also barely had two minutes of screen time. What's worse is that his presence is more relevant in his learning segment. If a character has the same amount of screen time in their learning segment as their own episode, and is more relevant to the plot, we've got a problem. And get this, he said twice the amount of words in a cameo than his debut. The brass band is arriving at Brendam Docks. What? And it's rather hard to know anything about his character with such a short appearance. In a behind the scenes video, Jamie Thomason describes a novel like this. He is, in many regards, similar to Thomas. He's new to Sodor, um, so he's more inexperienced. Um, but like Thomas, he's, uh, you know, he's the same age, helpful, keen, eager, cheerful. So we just need to give him some little something that makes his voice separate from Thomas. Yeah, he and Thomas are totally similar in age. Yeah, no significant age gap there or, or anything. The only things that are that line up with his appearances are his cheerfulness and not willing to hold a grudge. Yet with only a small amount of screen time, Neville has gained a decently sized group of fans, including myself. I think it's all because of his design. Neville is based on the Southern Railway Q1. Built for wartime service, the Q1 was built purely with function in mind, and no attention to looks. This earned them many nicknames, the most well known being Ugly Duckling. To me though, the Q1's ugliness is what I find that makes them look cool. Neville carries the number 33010, an actual number of a Q1. But overall, I like Neville. His character prevents me from raising him too high, but I can't bring myself to put him too low either. C tier. Thank you! Proteus isn't really on this list for his character, but more for the mystery surrounding him. All we know is that he is supposed to have carried a magic lamp, and is said to grant you wishes if you can find it. We don't know where he's from, we don't know what happened to him, we don't even know if he really existed. 
Maybe the engine that fell off the bridge and Duncan got spooked was him? Could it be he was responsible for what Duncan saw? It's the ghost! In mythology, he was said to have great knowledge, but would only answer your questions if you could catch him. This would have been a problem, as he was supposed to have the ability to shapeshift. This could explain the connection between the three different engines linked to the scholarly railway mythology. Could there be any truth to this? Probably not. This is just speculation. But it does make you wonder. Let's give him B tier for the mystery surrounding him. Dennis is an interesting concept for two reasons, his laziness and where it stems from. Dennis is based on 11001, which according to the Thomas theorist, made him a relation to Neville. But in real life, the engine was a one-off and not a success. While being a failure in real life, in the Thomas reality, it translates to him being lazy. What's interesting about his laziness is how it contrasts the idea of being a really useful engine. However, I don't feel his redemption at the end felt realistic. This could have been handled better if there had been a follow-up story, but in true hit era fashion, it didn't happen. I feel his arc in the fan-made video, All Eyes and Dennis, did a much better job of this character shift. And as for design, many people like it. But me personally, eh, I'm not a fan. Dennis was also meant to reappear in Day of the Diesels, but this was changed last minute to Norman. Which makes no sense. I mean, he barely does anything. Just another toy for Hit to promote. Going purely by what the Hit era gave us, I'll put him in C tier. Help! Help! Moving on to Season 10, Jeremy the Jet was the first non-rail character of the hit era. I'm not sure what most fans think of him, but I'm not a big fan. He feels more like just the new flavor of airplanes versus trains. Now with wings! And it doesn't feel nearly as well executed as Harold and Percy. He's more of the character to go with the airport, only a full season after its introduction. It's also really weird looking at him next to the engines, as he's way out of scale. I've seen jets like him from a distance, and they are much larger in real life. Though I will give him this, at least he does make a decent amount of appearances after his introduction. But I am a little off put by his design. His eyes are where his windshield should be, so how does the pilot see? Does he have one? Would one even fit in him? I mean, that might be why he flies so badly. It's rude and flies much too low. Though if there is one thing I do like about his main episode, it's Percy. Very much in character, he prefers rails to wings. You need rails, laughed Percy. They work wonders, you know. Always. The way he talks to Thomas is also very much like he does to Duck in All at Sea. Overall, Jeremy didn't feel necessary. D tier. His name was Fearless Freddy. Here's a good one. From what I can tell, Freddy is liked by the fandom. I personally think he's one of the best utilized hit era newbies. He had not one, not two, but three leads, as well as some other cameos. He was also meant to reappear in season 16. I personally didn't have an interest in Freddy before, but since I rewatched his episodes, he's really grown on me, much like Elizabeth. Freddy feels like a very interesting concept, as he was mentioned to have known Sir Hindle back in the day. This implies that he had once been a member of the Mid-Soto Railway, though some fans may take issue with this, as he has knowledge of the railway Scarlow and Renaissance don't. And as the Mid-Soto was quite a distance from the Scarlow Railway, this shouldn't be possible. My theory regarding this is that in the TV series, both lines used to be quite close. This explains why it was Scarlowy and Reneas who brought Duke to the yard and not Douglas. In more recent years, the Scarlowy Railway would expand and restore the old lines for their own use. Freddy would later be brought on as the railway became more popular with tourists, as he knew the lines so well. Back to Freddy, he has a very nice design. He is based on the real-life engine Russell. Russell. He is an older engine, yet prides himself on his title of Fearless Freddy. You're not scared, are you? Of course not. I'm Fearless Freddy. In his youth, he used to be quite fast and knows the old lines better than anyone. Even in his old age, he's still just as much of a daredevil as ever. In a way, he reminds me of Granddad Mort from Bluey. Despite their age, both of them are still as energetic as ever. Overall, Freddy is a really fun and enjoyable character. S tier. He felt very proud. My name's Rocky. Rocky exists. Introduced in Edward Strikes Out, he is a crane brought to Sodor to do jobs too big for Harvey. But like many hit air characters, he's mostly here to market his toy. I mean, we already had the breakdown train, did we really need another crane? Many seasons later, the breakdown cranes would be brought back to serve on the west coast of the island. Rocky is mainly stationed at the search and rescue center for emergencies, though he does often appear for other work. He's also rather lacking in character, though his design is nice, and he does reappear in later seasons. D tier. Rosie was a cheerful, chirpy little tank engine. 
Rosie is a personal favorite of mine, even outside the hit era. As such, I have a lot to say about her. I'll just keep it brief here and possibly do a video dedicated to her later. Rosie is a very fun character, and like Arthur, is one of the few new characters to have a good reason to have Thomas be the first character they interact with in an episode. What's nice is that we get to see how Thomas warms up to her over time, as she turns into a more mature and love-hearty character. She's a fan favorite to many, and like Rocky, has made several appearances after her debut. She also has a very interesting design. S tier. Rosie was very happy. My name's Whiff, because I'm a bit smelly. On to season 11 now, and another very unique character. Whiff, named after his bad smell, is the main garbage engine on Zodor. Oh, garbage, well. Which is odd, because his actual base is quite clean and well kept. The Northeastern Railway number 66, called Aerolite, was made as a private engine and exhibit piece. Something else I want to point out about Whiff is that in his debut episode, he was paired with Emily. Emily is a 422 tender engine, and looks quite elegant, whereas Whiff is a 224 tank engine, and not glamorous at all. Their wheel bases are the same, but flipped, much like the rest of them. Something else unusual about Whiff's design is that he's the only engine to feature glasses. Many characters in fiction who share this trait tend to be embarrassed about it. Whiff, on the other hand, doesn't give a hoot what others think about him, a rather good role model for kids who can be teased for this. Originally, I was going to compare Whiff to Warrior from Tugs, as they're both rather simple characters who deliver garbage. You know, I go to Whiff garbage. His lordship needs garbage. We all need garbage. But I think an even better comparison would be Pigpen. Almost always dirty, Pigman also doesn't take people's insults to heart. Sort of makes you want to treat me with more respect, doesn't it? You're an absolute mess. Just look at yourself. On the contrary, I didn't think I looked that good. Whiff also continues to reappear in the CGI era, though I'm still catching up on side seasons. He's also the only hit era character still around at the show. He is a significant side character in All Engines Go, being voiced by Joe Pengu. <laughs> but going by what I've seen, I really like him. A tier. Oh, thank you. His name is Hector, but we call him Hector the Horrid. Hector is quite a standout track in the series. In his first episode, he is new and afraid to be filled with coal. So he acts out and puts his big bad face on. He scares Thomas into not coming near by yelling at him. Keep away! Michael Brandon gets a bad rap outside of season 8, but I quite like him in this episode. However, Hector takes it too far when he scares Rosie away, which prompts Thomas to shove him off the tracks. Honestly though, what is it with name trucks and tank engines? But after he finally opens up, Thomas proves to him that being filled with coal isn't bad. This helps him conquer his fear, and he becomes a really useful truck. In his next episode, he is paired up with James. I'll be honest, pairing these two up is something I never would have thought of. I rather enjoy it, even though it is a rather repetitive Three Strikes episode and the majority of it is just James enforcing himself as in charge of making decisions. Onwards! Onwards! Don't slow down, James! Wait a minute, I'm the leader. I'm the one that says when we go. Here we go. Charge! This kind of follow-up episode helps enforce Hector's sort of redemption. This is the kind of thing I was talking about with Dennis. He also has a standout design, especially compared to the other trucks. A tier. It felt wonderful. Okay, here we go. You know what's coming. You know what's about to happen. The absolute scourge of the Thomas fandom himself. I'm Billy! Let's go! I still have yet to meet someone who actually likes Billy. And that's rather natural, because I'm certain he was designed to be unlikable. I mean, does this look like favorite character potential? Stop telling me what to do. You are a very bossy engine. And Billy raced off. He thinks you're a bossy boiler, me hearty, laughed Salty. You know when a babysitter meets that one kid who doesn't do anything they're told and makes a mess of everything? Yeah, that's Billy. Except sometimes said characters are actually better than him. This can be seen as Thomas says that he has to look after the new engine. I bet you can start to see why Thomas fans don't like Billy. But what I'm about to say next might be a little controversial, so make sure you're sitting down for this. I don't think Billy is the worst character. He is annoying, yes, but he does seem to learn by the end. Also, despite being planned to, Billy never reappears, instead being replaced by Charlie. Also, looking at his criminal record, all he really did was be annoying, pushing Percy onto the hopper, and slow industry a bit. Honestly, that's kinda normal in this era, and at least you can distinguish his character. Now look at these other characters. Samson is annoying, never learns his lesson, is way too proud for his own good, and a total idiot. And Nia, oh boy has she got it in for her. Replacing an Audrey original character. 
And she doesn't have anything to her character besides where she's from. So if someone can actually tell me with a straight face that Billy is worse than these characters, I will be quite impressed. All the same, this isn't to say he's good. F tier. Madge is a snub-nosed truck. Many people say that Madge has a very mother-like personality, and I agree. The way she interacts with Duncan, Reneas, and Scarlet is very fun and enjoyable. She also features an unusual and fun design, with a paint scheme to match. It's also nice to see another non-railway vehicle on this part of Sodor. Thomas' branch had Birdie, the Little Western had Bulgy, and now the Scarlet engines have Match. She is also one of the only characters of the hit era to have two episodes in a row. Not much else to say, Match is just fun. A tier. How exciting! exclaimed Match. This is Stanley. Stanley is a lot like Neville. Both have nice designs and plenty of potential, but don't have much of their character. Stanley is just another nice, helpful engine, even though we have plenty of those. However, I won't try and deny that he was initially utilized phenomenally. The way he was used to have Thomas bounce off made his introduction so much more enjoyable. He is a plot device, but a very effective one. His basis is a combination of small tank engines, much like Percy. Stanley is also the only character I want to talk about outside the series. In 2012, a video was uploaded to YouTube with the title, A Toy Train in Space, in which a father helped his son send his favorite toy train to space and back. It's such a sweet, delightful video showing the bonding experience of their family. A few years later, a dedicated toy was made to commemorate it. After this, Stanley would return in later seasons and appeared in CGI, but barely did anything. As a kid, I remember I did have the book version of Thomas Puts the Brakes on, but I lost it after a time and forgot about it. I only remember this after I first watched The Great Discovery and the episode version of the story. For such a nothing character, there are several people both in and outside the fandom who will remember and have a connection with Stanley, especially among those of us who grew up with the hit era. And like Neville, he does have a decent fan following. It would be wrong to rank him without using this information. Let's give him B. Hank was very special. On to season 12 now, the season that was meant to transition from models to CGI. As such, Hank was the first character to be introduced who was intended to have a CGI face on his model. He was also the first foreign character, coming from the USA, hence his red, white, and blue livery. While Rosie was built in America, she and her siblings would be instantly shipped abroad to aid in the war efforts. Hank also has a notable design, being inspired by the Pennsylvania Railroad K-4. The surviving K-4s are recognized as the official state locomotives of Pennsylvania. Being such a massive engine, Hank shouldn't be able to run on Sodar, so he was scaled down for his appearance. In terms of character, he seems to be yet another nice, helpful engine. Following this, Hank never reappeared, so most people think he returned to the States. Here's an idea. What if Hank's time on Sodor was a test? I mean, what if he was there to see if the railway's infrastructure was capable of holding him, and then data from the test would allow Connor and Caitlin to eventually run on the island? I don't know, that kinda sounds cool. Let's put him in B tier. Colin? Um, yeah, he exists. He's a crane that works on the wharf, but I don't really know what to say about him. He's obedient, I guess, but that's about it. Colin was meant to return in CGI and become a crane at the Earl's estate, but this was ultimately dropped. I'm rather glad about this, as a big part of his episode was him having to stay in place. D tier. This is Flora. Okay, Flora is one of the hit era characters I really don't like. Again, she's lacking her personality, but she has one of the only designs I hate. She looks like if you threw Toby, Daisy, and Molly together as an OC. Her only trait that contributes to her episode is that she's another tram engine. Literally the first time I actually watched season 12, I skipped the episode halfway through. I understand if some people do like her, but I just really can't. F tier. Now, here's the finished tier list. From best to worst is Rosie, Freddy, Whiff, Madge, Hector, Stanley, Mighty Mac, Proteus, Hank, Molly, Neville, Rocky, Dennis, Jeremy, Colin, Billy, and Flora. Anyone watching this will probably move them around on their own list, with the exception of Billy. Speaking of, how would you rank them? Do you like or hate my opinions? Please tell me about it in the comments. I can't wait to talk more about these characters with you. I'd also like to shout out Grayson the Green Ivet 2 mt and KarenFan010 for requesting the video, as well as everyone who voted for it on my community poll. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and be really useful.